Hi guys, um, this week I'd like to discuss motivating your character. What motivates people to do things? And in my belief, there's only three things that do it. So it's going to be a short video. And to get your character to do anything, you have to apply pressure to them. As humans, we are happy to be happy. We, we, um, if we have some, if it's not, there's a famous saying, if it's not broke, don't fix it. So if we're happy with the situation, we're not going to fix it. We're not going to make a change in our life. So that's why there is the idea in, there's a, an idea of the thing called the um, inciting incident. The thing that applies the first pressure to someone to start the story. A story needs to have a start. So there needs to be an event. It's very hard just to roll into a story. It is possible. And it may, it may sort of alien happens a bit. Ripley doesn't have the, the, the inciting incident at the start of Alien. She takes over from Dallas. If you watch that show and not know that Sigourney Weaver is going to be the main character, you would swear, uh, that I think it's Tom Skerritt, was going to be the main character of that film and the hero and save everyone and be the captain that yeah, saves, saves the world from these alien creatures. So what are the three things that motivate people? Dissatisfaction, suffering, and jealousy. So you're unhappy with the situation you're in. You may you know, seek a divorce. You may sell your car and buy a different one. You're unhappy with the current situation. You're not satisfied by it. And that's that lack of um, being sated, having no satisfaction in your current situation, drives you to act to become satisfied. That is the first pressure, the first motivation. You've got to apply pressure to anything to get it to move. A ball sitting on a flat table won't move until you apply pressure to it and it'll move away from the pressure you've applied. This is the same here. You've applied a dissatisfaction to your character, they're going to move away from it. So let's say your character um, isn't happy with his job. He is not going to go and buy a new car. He's going to find a new job. Also, the amount of pressure you apply on a person has to be enough, a bit like the, the balls in a, um, the cradles. I don't know whose cradle. A Newton's, Newton's cradle, I think they're called. The, the ball that hits the first series of balls will throw the one at the end out the same distance. And eventually, due to you know, expelling energy, that movement will get smaller and smaller and smaller. But you can't have someone lose their job and then suddenly go and declare war on a, an entire you know, autocracy south of the border. So a guy in Texas doesn't lose his job and then suddenly go and assassinates the president of Mexico. Um, unless there's other factors and him losing his job is the straw that broke the camel's back. But that is not enough motivation to get him to act that way. So they have this satisfaction. A person is un not satisfied with the current situation will do something to remedy it. The next one is suffering, and suffering is a good one. Suffering makes people op uh, operate immediately. You will always run away from being burnt or being shot or being stabbed, or if your shoulder is sore, you, you actually move it to make sure that it's not sore anymore. You do what you can to relieve your suffering. Suffering is far bigger motivation than just not being satisfied, because the satisfaction not being satisfied has to get so far so high that you begin to suffer so suffering is a major motivation if a person is suffering from something they will act large to get relief from suffering the other one is jealousy you see something and you want it and this the jealousy is another form of dissatisfaction so you see someone over there, they've got something, you want to have that. You want to have that same opportunity as them. You want to have that same car as them, the same house as them, the same job as them. You want to be able to give um, your spouse, your girlfriend, your boyfriend, whoever it is, the gifts that this person over there that you're jealous of is able to supply. So you will do something to reach that goal, to not feel jealous, to have that object that they had. So you're no longer jealous of it. You now possess it as well. Jealousy can cause a suffering. Dissatisfaction can cause a suffering. So you need to get them to that, to that level. Like, I'm very jealous of people that are fantastic musicians because that's you know, the thing I'd like to be, but I'm not that. 
I'm not naturally talented in that direction, though I really enjoy it. Um, so I'm a little bit jealous and it, it motivates me enough to practice, but it would not motivate me enough to quit my job and move to New Orleans where there's a vibrant music scene. I'm not that jealous. Um, I'm dissatisfied with my playing. Okay, so how am I going to remedy that? I'll take lessons. So that's a, that. But there's no suffering for me in not being a great guitarist. There's just, that's not a thing that's going to make me suffer. So we've found that we've got the three things we can use now. We have jealousy, dissatisfaction, and suffering. Now there's two forms of these things. There's what I call medicine and vitamins. People take medicine, people should take vitamins. So uh, vitamins are the proactive approach to a problem. <clears throat> you're not feeling the problem, but you're going to take action to make sure you don't feel the problem. That is a much smaller motivation for a character. If they see someone over there, you know, um, getting taken away by the secret police, they might dash into their own house and burn some documents or go hiding. That could be the straw that breaks the camel's back in that story. That could be the one that motivates them to actually act. But what will really make them act much faster is when the secret police are banging on their door and they're going to come and get them. They'll be packing their stuff and climbing out through the bathroom window as quick as you've ever seen. So there's medicine and vitamins. If you can make this dissatisfaction a need to have a medicine, it has to be repaired. It's not an impending jealousy. It's not impending suffering. It's not future dissatisfaction. They're dissatisfied now. They're suffering now. They're jealous now. That is a much better motivation. So if you, when you're writing your characters, find those trigger points. Use an empathy matrix, previous video, that sort of talks about what have they seen, what have they heard, what have they said, what's their feelings, what world they live in. If you understand a person as a real person, as your character as a real person, then you'll know what makes them jealous, what makes them suffer, what, what, what are they dissatisfied about in their life, what might they change, and then you make that an immediacy, you make it right now. That issue is happening now and that will, they will act. Not only does it make it believable, of course, you understand I'm using an empathy matrices and you know the character intimately and you've put that into your story so they're a believable real person. Having them react to something that's real will feel real as well. So keep, keep those three motivations in your head when you're writing and everything will be fine. Um, nick over to griffithscreative.com.au if you want to get more blogs, there's some videos over there, there's stuff, there's books. Um, there's a new book coming out, so if you go over there and just drop us a line and contact us, I'll make sure that you're contacted back when the new book called Tools Not Rules comes out. And it'll be free for quite a while, so make sure you get yourself a copy. Um, and until then, next time, or until next time, keep writing. Bye, guys.